And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris, and I'm bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early. Well, I've been here since it was early. <clears throat> and, oh, I've got a show for you today. An extra show. Uh-oh, camera's, camera's doing me dirty here. Is that better? Be awake, not woke. Yes, now you can see the t-shirt. And what am I doing right here? Well, running a little 10% profit and uh, just continuing on with the trade for Ethereum to the downside. Why is that? Well, I'm going to show you why uh, and how I am um, going to set my take profit and again, this is leverage trading, guys. This is like gamble with your money if you dared to know what you are doing uh, because it can hurt you in a quick second. So this is a 10x levered trade. Um, and well, I, I might take profit. Very well may get hit here shortly. Up 750 bucks right now. So not bad, not bad. And... Basically, uh, this is where I started my entry and I might get taken out right here. As price action does like to kind of wick back up to the nine exponential on the five minute time frame, that is a nine exponential moving average. And well, I just don't want to give back that much of my trade. So if it does want to come back above that pivot, even on a five minute, I'm just going to let it go. I could be wrong. Or it could be right. And uh, what is the general thesis I'm running right now? Well, let's take a look at the chart here. Let's take a look at the chart. And what is happening on, um, this is just a sell day. Uh, you know, people fear in the market, the war is going on. T typically this is the, you know, tomorrow is like a bounce day uh, because the war in Israel, uh, Typically never really, really kills the market, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And that's why it's always going to have uh, risk management in play. And look, long-term Bitcoin holdings are still completely fine. We've been talking about Bitcoin and wanting it to come back down somewhere around 26,000 bucks, right? We said that was very, very likely to happen uh, way back here. And that was way before the war happened. How do we know that was going to happen? Not because we have a crystal ball. Technical analysis, it is more of an art. And it is not, it is not uh, crystal ball telling. And it is not, an, it, it's not an exact science. It's more of an art, not an exact science. But hopefully we're getting more and more and more exact with our trading skills. And that's why I developed the course, Crypt Courses. There's a link in the description below. You can check it out here, uh, get access to the course, go to our website, bitcoinadvisors.com, subscribe to the YouTube channel and like it uh, if you do enjoy some of the content today. So actually, as I am reading this here today, uh, this is a nice little M formation. And uh, if we do close anywhere below this wick here, I do believe that will give us a move back down to 26,371 uh, today. Um, however, there are many bullish factors still in play. Bitcoin holding it up relatively strong compared to its altcoin fellows. And why, if you've been following our channel, well, we've been talking about ETH Bitcoin chart. The ETH Bitcoin chart. The ETH Bitcoin chart. Ever since this broke down way back here, I think we started calling it around there. Said, hey, if we retest and reject, I'm going to get this off. I'm going to get this off, even though I want it on. Let's see, I can put it on another screen just so I can be monitoring closely. Um, and what is going to happen is this does look like it is going to get hit. So should I flash close it now? Yes, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and let it go. I'm going to take those profits and run. You never get hurt taking a profit, sir. You never get hurt taking a profit taking a profit. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Well, was it too early? Look, look at that. Um, after a big wick down like this, look, um, actually, anyways, I guess that one's in. Hey, what else do I have here? Check these out. 
These are actually what I think are going to be some of the better trades on the board. TRX and Solana short positions. This one's up 26%. This one's up 11%. You might say, how did you know? How did you know? Well, Ethereum has been on the receiving end of the red light saber. If you know what that means, Ethereum has been relatively weak against Bitcoin. And that, we had a beautiful trade over the weekend, guys. If you took that, it was on my Instagram. It was everywhere. Uh, congratulations. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, what else did I want to bring up here? So, ETH Bitcoin. We were talking about ETH Bitcoin. So, that's Ethereum priced in Bitcoin. And when that is bearish on the higher term time frames, on, on essentially when this, this is Ethereum priced in Satoshis, all you need to know is this. Look, when this chart is going down, and look, we called this out how many weeks ago? One, two, three, four. And we said, when it gets down to this level, this may be the time to buy some altcoins, to put in some bounce orders, to, uh, you know, enjoy some profits. I'm going to move this out of here. Enjoy, uh, well, enjoy buying the dip. As Bitcoin, I do think, is more on the bullish side. It's more on the bullish side. And why is that? Well, we've already went over that. I put out three videos. Look in the chat. All the, all the reasons. Inflation, having events, uptrend in the daily and the weekly, all the good things that we want to stay bullish. And look at that. Dow Jones popping up, 355. So... <clears throat> good sign there. Anyways, I want to get back to my point and see if I can even put these words together. So when ETH Bitcoin is going down, Ethereum is going to go down a lot more than Bitcoin. That's all you need to know. So when e this chart, ETH BTC is going down, Ethereum is going to go down a lot more, which also means all the altcoins pretty much associated with Ethereum are going to go down a lot more. And Pretty much altcoins in general. When this thing goes down, altcoins go down. And Bitcoin dominance typically goes up. And that's another thing why we look at these underlying market dynamics. Um, underlying market dynamics. Underlying market dynamics. Like the dollar, open interest. Uh, let's check out the fear and greed index. Fear and greed index. Come on, sir. Can you give me a little love? Can you give me a little love, sir? No, apparently not. Oh, we're still in a neutral zone. We're not even in the fearful zone. For a bottom to come in, that's that's actually good. And what I was a little bit worried about taking these shorts over the weekend was, look, like Bitcoin is anti-fragile. What that means is when... Wars go off when the rest of the world is capitulating because of COVID, because they don't know where their brain's at. Well, Bitcoin rises up like a shining star and he continues to prove himself stronger than strong. Bitcoin is a mighty beast. And well, we use technical analysis to manage our risk. And that way, you know, just in case we're wrong and the trend doesn't continue, well, we can always make money to the downside, right? Um, okay. Bitcoin cash. This, this is another one I absolutely think is ready to get smashed. Look at that. I'm glad we're going over all this guys. I'm glad we are going over all of this. Um, okay. What else? What else? So that's why we were taking those Ethereum short trades. And all right, I'm going to get into the TRX and um, the TRX trade. And I could be wrong on this, guys. This is very, very, very risky. But hey, by the way, guys, did you guys see this trade we took? Oh, my gosh. I should log in and show my account. 
But we got the full retrace on Bitcoin Satoshi's vision. The Satoshi's vision was crushed. All their dreams are gone. Just kidding. Just kidding, guys. Probably going to bounce from this area. I don't know. I don't know, but this was a topping signal on the daily time frame. Let's check it out. Does it have more to go? And, you know, our target was right there. Oh, my gosh. I have to say, I, I took profits all the way down. Had I held the short from way up here, I would have made, would have made uh, a decent amount of change. But I guess, I, I guess um, you know, you never get hurt taking a profit. That's the great saying. So let's see if I have it up in Discord. Just... Uh, just to check back on what you guys are missing out on if you're not in our group. Let's see. Oh, and the Solana trade playing out nicely. I mean, I have to say I did take profits all the way down. All the way down. And this one started... Oh, that was the link trade. I don't even think I'm going to get this in the window. Needless to say, if you're following the channel, you saw me talk about it. And if you're in Discord, you saw me talk about it. But we shorted this thing way up here and we said it's going for the full retrace. And guess who else did the full retrace? Guess who else? All your XRPP coin fans. They went for a little slide down to doggy town. Oh, Maybe the full retrace is not there yet, but that is the full retrace. That There's another example where we retraced all the gains, but um, I think I was saying the more likely thing to happen on this one is that we come down to this area right here. So maybe not there yet, which means more to go. This one, injective, everybody loves this one. Well, if we close anywhere here or lower, I am expecting a move down to 689. But why did I take the TRX short? Uh, because this one, from what I know, is like a Justin Sun coin and had no business doing this, okay? 25%. And what else did I want? Where's my market sessions? I guess it's not on this chart. Is it on this one? Yes. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. So what we're going to look at here is the market sessions. And what happened over the weekend? Well, almost Friday over the weekend. And actually, I think I was just looking for a move down here when I started shorting this one. But um, we had this little pump. Jeez. Can I please get that off? Let's take it off. Okay. pump from here to here and I was like wait a second that doesn't look right I don't think that's I don't think that's valid and then we had the weekend and we came down and then pumped again this doesn't look like much on this screen here but yeah yeah this one's given up the ghost given up the ghost and loosely loosely hanging out with those uh yeah, so if we start to break this region, it's going to come down a lot more, in my opinion. That's why. That's why this one can come all the way down to here, and why I think it's probably going to be a decent trade. I mean, 16%, not bad, right? And then if it wants to go for more, which it definitely could, um, you know, down to this level right here. Anyways, I expect this one to be on the receiving end of a big red candle. Um, so that, that is that. And then the uh, Solana target. So we had this target down for BSV, target hit, mission accomplished, good job. I, I honestly, if I could say, uh, I'll, maybe I'll show my account tomorrow. I don't have time to do it right now. Um, Bitcoin is still holding the line in the sand at 27,383, so not bad. 
NASDAQ's only down 45, S&P down four, Dixie is up. And this was what I was saying last week is that, well, perhaps the uh, 21 was the target on the daily. We did not get there yet. Um, war in other countries makes the dollar look strong. I would assume that's the case. I'd have to go back and do a little bit of research, but the measure move on this one is up here. And let's take a look at TLT, which here's what people don't realize. The bond market is the biggest market in the world. It makes Bitcoin look like a little drop in the bucket. And TLT, I've been doing some research on this one. Uh, another very nice trade uh, taken there. And uh, yeah, mask getting compound, getting compounded. Um, file coin getting filed really hard. Um, Solana, that's the other one I wanted to show. So again, a bit of an M formation. What is an M formation? Well, high, low, lower high, and we are about to take out the middle wick, which would give us a secondary target down here. That would complete the M, or you could complete it right here, depending upon how aggressive you want to be with it. That is on the daily time frame. So minimum, I think 20 bucks. Yeah, 20 bucks is the retrace. And then looking at this thing on the weekly, excuse me, on the weekly, not the two week, could you call this a bit of an M? I think you could. Let's see if we got, oh yeah, that's an M. That is an M, so if we can close the week below 17 bucks, that would bring us all the way back down to here. And um, well, your Solana's, um, yeah, just short term troubles, you know, long term. Um, Highly esteemed internet technology, going to take over the world, going to take over Ethereum. This is the Ethereum beater, which I, I'm just kidding you. I, I don't think that's the case. Uh, but um, I do think that, you know, the group has a good enough following to, you know, send it again during the bull market. Um, yep. Just watching those profits dry away. <laughs> As I'm on stream here, I'm going to have to go manage that here in a bit. But I wanted to get back to my thoughts on Mr. Ethereum and bring up this chart. High Block Capital, been finding this very, very useful. I guess not on the one minute time frame. I don't know why they don't allow to zoom out. But uh, if we look at the one month heat map, which is showing all the liquidations that will occur, um, or where the liquidity lies, essentially. You can see some levels down here. Is this gonna happen in one day? I don't know. Um, but if I was the market maker, oh, by the way, today is whale day, by the way. Um, Asia's market is closed. Um, I think it's a bank holiday or something in America. Today, is the stock market open? I look at the futures. The futures tend to be open a lot more, so that means maybe tomorrow could be a little bit more bloody um, as traditional markets may or may not be open. Let's check in on some of our favorite stocks, our stonks. Man, I did a great analysis the other day about the banks and everything crashing. Um, just way ahead of time, way ahead of time, way ahead of time. I hope you guys are watching these YouTubes and if you do enjoy get, do me a favor throw it a like, okay? All you gotta do is smash the button. Just hit the little, click the little thumbs up button if you if you do like it, okay? Nice little gap down on Amazon. So is the market open today? Maybe I'm misinformed. Uh, Apple, it looks like everything's trading today for Apple. Apple's got a gap up here. And, um, you know, all around, I mean, NASDAQ, looks like it picked itself back up by its bootstraps and it's okay. It's just a matter of, is the dollar going to continue up to our target? Everybody else says no. And well, this 
First warning sign, dollars coming down. That is bullish for Bitcoin, bullish for Bitcoin. So traditionally, war news, okay, sell off Monday. Tuesday, turn around Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, whatever you want to call it, maybe tomorrow. Um, as long as Bitcoin does not violate this main region, and I'll get back into the Bitcoin analysis now. Um, yeah, as, as long as we don't close below here, this line in the sand right here, on a daily time frame, well, um, the hopes and dreams of the bulls are still in full force. So nobody be losing hope out there. Um, Bitcoin is, he's been through war before, right? He's been through war before. And if anything, it's just going to make him turn the money printer on faster, right? Um, let's take a look at those bond yields. Should be going up, right? Because when the dollar goes up, wars have, oh, there's TLT. Absolutely getting shafted, as I told my friend over the weekend. We spent about an hour going over the bond prices. And there's this thing in the Constitution that says that the U.S. will never default on its debt obligations. What does that mean? That means Jeff Gunlock is right, and the debt will go to $200 trillion. So that's why it might be good to have some Bitcoin in your back pocket. The only fixed monetary unit in the world. The half-life of gold is 35 years. They're minting 2% more gold every single year. 2% more gold. Um, yeah, so just do the math. I'm not a math guy. It took me a while to figure it out. Oh, look at this. So it's kind of fun just perusing the charts and seeing what is getting crushed and what is getting not crushed. Um, SCU, SIA coin. Oh, my SIA coins. They're lost in the sea. Sorry, Mr. SIA. Yeah, I, I think I'm ready to look. I'm, I'm, I'm really ready to dump that one. Dump, dump town. All right, I think I've rambled enough. Two years up at 5%. Oh, coming down. Maybe bond yields have peaked. That is a good, that would be good. We want to see this come down more. I think our overall target is a bit higher after we hit our major target. But um, why, why is my RSI not showing up here? Hmm. To be fair, if it's going to bounce, that's where it bounced from. The 10-year. Putting in a little M. Putting in a little M. So, yeah, that could come down hard. Why would bond yields come down? Well, interest rates would have to come down. So, the bond market is way ahead of all the other markets, right? Way, way ahead. Way, way ahead. 30-year and TLT. So, interestingly enough, interestingly enough, TLT is based off the 20-year yields. And it's an index from iShares, from good old BlackRock, those good, good humanitarians over at BlackRock. Um, that's their bond fund, the 20-year bond fund, whatever that is. So, when interest rates go up, bond prices go down. And this might not look like a big drawdown, but from here to here, 49%. Now, considering the bond market is bigger than the stock market, this is like the equivalent of the dot-com crash. So... Why isn't stocks coming down yet? Well, I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I'll have to do a little deeper dive on that one. Um, other than that, guys, um, I do think I'm going to leave it off there. And we'll leave it off with just a short-term Bitcoin analysis here. Bitcoin and the heat map. So also, yeah, heat maps. We got levels down at 1440. 
I imagine if it does start to go, yeah, 1440, even 1300 can can get hit. Why that new futures ETF thing for Ethereum got launched? Ooh, Nvidia might be looking tasty for a for a dump party. A um, lot more fun going short than it is long. Just in my opinion. Um, hmm. Do I want to look at anything else here? Let's take a look at the liquidation levels on Bitcoin. And wrap it up with that. We'll wrap it up with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, BTC, boom. Big bounce areas at 25,000. And 21.6. So, yeah, not, I, I do imagine, you know, this level holds if, if it does come down there. And as long as we're above there, in fact, you know, this level, 25,200. So, one massive candle wick down would be probably what I would, what I'm kind of guessing here. Um, as I said earlier this week, it's funny how things just don't happen like right away. They just end up happening over time. Because the daily time frame moves slow. And if you study price action, eventually you start to see like what typically happens on the lower time frames does happen on the higher time frames. And I don't know why I have this drawn out like that. Well, I guess I must have moved it. I must have moved it. In volatile markets, the price does like to use the wicks, okay? So short-term bouncing off of 2,300 and yeah. So what I said earlier this week is we were looking at this trend line and I said, look, price action was right there, boom. Get a big, nice wick down, put in a higher low and do something like this. Did that happen? No. But could it happen here? Could we come down here, tag this guy and then put in a higher low like that? Is it gonna happen in one day? Probably not. Does it happen over the next few weeks? Perhaps, but I think the weekly time frame might tell us something different. And I'd say this is a pretty important week uh, for Bitcoin. If we are gonna remain bullish. Um, and that bond market thing, you know, just thinking about the impacts, if that is actually a bigger crash than the 08 crash and more money got wiped out in the banking sector and they're just, they're just printing more. That's all they're doing. That short-term bank funding program that bailed out these banks, guys. Guys and gals, guys and girls. Uh, that is... Uh-oh, am I going to have to take some profits here? No, I'm going to leave this one. I'm going for the full retrace. I don't even care. I'm waiting for the full retrace where it goes all the way down. Anyways, um... The weekly momentum is still to the upside as long as we're above 25.645. So volatility is declining now. Uh, Two-day time frame. What does that say? Going to cross down today below 27.731. Volatility is still low. And the daily, let's see how, how did that work. So the daily typically gets you 15 to 20%. From expansion with a standard deviation of nine. So if this does not continue onwards and upwards, I would say this is a failure, right? Because now volatility is beginning to decline. Momentum's going to cross back down. We're getting a bit of a sell signal on the PMARP. We're losing that exponential. So again, um, my base case was early last week, I think it was, uh, whenever that candle 
got put in was we come back down to 26. As long as we were maintaining the uptrend on the daily time frame, which this could just be considered a consolidation at this point. If this is all we get today and tomorrow you see a bounce up and we close anywhere above 28.680, Bitcoin's in a rocket in everybody's face. And yeah, I mean, for the long-term hodlers out there who believe in Bitcoin long-term, who just, you know, believe like I do that Bitcoin's going to hit a quarter million bucks over the next probably three to five years uh, minimum, then who cares about this move, right? This is 5%. More importantly, who cares about this move, right? Let's say Bitcoin goes to zero. It's at 27,000 right now. Why do we have targets way, way up there? Well, all the money printing, all the TA, all the everything. At a minimum, when we take out 66,000 or 69,000, you know, the next retracement gets you up to the, the explosive blow off top of 240. Um, so here's your risk. You put 25,000 in, you get one Bitcoin. Okay, Bitcoin goes to zero, you lost 25 grand. Bitcoin goes to quarter million dollars. You made 10x on that money. So it's a one to nine risk to reward ratio right now. And that's just over the next couple of years. If Bitcoin goes to a million bucks over the next 10 years, we'll do the math there. With that, I'm going to sign out. I hope you guys have a blessed and highly favored day. Oh, I'm taking off the smart glasses and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.